Well, everybody, welcome to the first part of How to Play Basic Impetus. New little series I'm going to do. Uh, probably have a bunch of videos on this. Uh, but yeah, I hope to showcase the rules, Basic Impetus. They're free, so why not, right? Uh, I'm going to show you how it's played, some of the finer points of the rules, how to get into Ancients gaming in general, really. Uh, everything from mounting your figures to how to move your units, the whole shebang. So I hope it's enjoyable. I hope you really enjoy it and get something useful out of this series of videos. And uh, yeah, this will be the first part. And again, I'm going to keep things real. I'm not going to get too fancy. I'm a gamer. I'm making this as a gamer for other gamers or people contemplating getting into gaming. Uh, I hope this video series really helps. And if you have any interest in ancient battles, then this might be the set of rules for you. As I said before, Basic Impetus is a great game. Uh, it's free to download, along with all the extra things you get along with it, like a quick play sheet, army lists, all that. And it's on their website, and I'll cover all that for you. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, again, welcome to part one. Let's get into this and see what's going on. And the first thing to do, folks, is to go to the website, check the links below in the description of this video, and go to their website and download the basic impetus rules. They're free. And check out the army lists. Check out the rest of the page, like how to mount your figures, how many figures you'll need, and so on. And give it a good read. And hopefully, you can use this video series to kind of come back to and, and learn the finer points of the, the rules. Okay. I hope you enjoy. And one of the first things you got to do is download the rules. Remember, folks, these are free. Basic impetus. And there it is. I think it's about nine pages in all. With some examples in the back. And they're all there. Complete rules. And also, you can get the basic impetus quick reference sheet. Download that. In this case, I put mine in a little uh, protector. And there's all the charts for the game that you'll need. And we'll go through these in this series as we go through the various sections like movement and melee. But uh, yeah, you're definitely going to need these. So go grab them, have a good read, and then refer back to this video series and you should have no problems understanding basic impetus. As you can see, mine are kind of roughed up. Got some notes in there. Well, they are free, folks. So yeah. So yeah, go ahead and download that. Once you download your rules, your basic impetus rules, you're all set. The only thing you're going to need now is some miniatures. In this case, right before you, you can see my 15 millimeter uh, feudal English army. And it's a complete army for basic impetus. It's basically nine stands, about uh, 70 figures in all, which, depending on your preferences to mounting, could be more or less than that. It's up to you. But uh, I got three units of T troops, which are missile troops. I got three units of heavy infantry, heavy foot. And I got two units of knights back here, which are your heavy calf. And finally, I got one unit of skirmishers, which are bowmen in this case. So, there you go. Very attainable, folks. Very attainable. Not a difficult to collect for. Uh, in addition, you'll need a tape measure marked in metrics. You're going to have to keep track of centimeters in this game. You'll also need some markers to represent disordered units. I use red rubies. It's convenient for me. I got about ten of them here. That should be enough. I also got some micro dice, little red ones in this case, to represent permanent losses to units when they take damage uh, from shooting and melee. I use these to represent it, and the number of pips represents the number of damage. Uh, again, I got about ten of these. That's probably too much, but I got them. And about a dozen dice for rolling to hit and your combat resolution and so on and so forth. And an additional option uh, is this little base. And when I get to the movement part of this how-to series, I'll show you what I use that for. But for now, I use this little blank base for uh, measuring my uh, wheels with my individual units. So you may or may not want one of these. I always keep one special just for that purpose. Now some of the other things you can use or might want to use or not are shown here. Like, for instance, these are the bases which you can get perfectly sized for impetus. In this case, this is a 40 by, uh, or an 80 by 20 uh, skirmisher base. And I got these from Litgo. 
So look up litgo.net, I believe is the, the address, and uh, they sell a lot of really nice bases that they'll cut precisely for you to fit your games of impetus. Perfect. Uh, also, if you already have figures mounted for Wargamer Search Group or DBX Gaming, you could use them in impetus too. These are standard 15 millimeters who are mounted on 40 by 15s. And it just so happens that four of these bases together, just like that, equals one base in impetus. So you don't need to remount your figures if you don't want for impetus. I think it, the rules do work perfectly fine with DBX mounting, which I've done a few times. And of course, you can never run out of more dice. In these case, this case, I like to use these for initiative. Keep them separate from my actual dice. Uh, for markers, showing disorder or uh, damage from melee and shooting. Uh, some people like to use little stones, colored differently, like these are white. Or red poker chips, blue, white. You pick them up in grocery stores or wherever. Uh, and of course you have these rubies you see often used in games. They could be used just as fine for the same purpose. Uh, but yeah, there's all kinds of extra things you could get for your game. So that's just some of the optional things you might want to look for or an alternate way of mounting your figures if you already have figures mounted for something else. Uh, there you go. It works. Of course, like any miniatures game, terrain is a big part of it. So you might want to throw some terrain together. About a dozen pieces would be fine. Uh, they don't have to be anything special. I have a bunch of little pieces of felt here, you know, to represent my forests. I got felt, my roads, felt, uh, fields or whatever I can represent with felt. And I could put things on top of this like trees or lichen or whatever I want to represent whatever I want. I need about a dozen pieces should be fine. Uh, even some foam to represent hills, cut and flocked green would be perfect. Uh, the only requirements in the game is the actual sizes of the pieces. And what that is, is it has to be a minimum of 5 centimeters to a maximum of 20 centimeters, which comes to 2 to 8 inches. Um, for rectangles, that's the longest side. So it has to be at least 2 inches, maximum 8 inches along the long side. And for circular pieces, non-rectangle square pieces, that's the diameter which again would be two to eight inches. This is a perfect size right here for a little forest. That's the only requirements. And you should be good. Little pieces of terrain and you're fine. Uh, roads and rivers, the only requirements there is they can't exceed 40 millimeters in width. So the ones you see in front of you there are perfect sized. Uh, so yeah, go crazy. Get yourself a bag of lichen, whatnot. Uh, you can also add some buildings. Up there I've got a little building. And a little reminder that buildings, built-up areas as they're called, are considered impassable terrain in basic impetus. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't have them, it just means that they're impassable, you can't move through them. So that little building up there, if I put that on one of these square pieces of felt, for instance, the whole area would be a built-up area. And it would be represented by a little building. And maybe some whatever else I want to put in there, maybe a farmer with his pigs, whatever. But yeah, get some terrain. It'll really enhance your game, and there isn't a lot of requirements to the game terrain-wise. So go ahead and see what you can come up with. And of course, another consideration to take into account is your play area. How much space do we need here to play basic impetus? Well, basically there's two different size play areas, or table sizes, however you want to look at it, that basic impetus uses. And it's based on the scale of miniatures that you have, and you're collecting and going to play your battles with. Uh, the bigger figures, 28 millimeter, 25 millimeter, the table size you need to play basic impetus is a standard six foot by four foot table. So nothing unusual there if you're an experienced wargamer. Uh, but if you play in anything smaller, uh, like 15 millimeter, six millimeter, and so on, <clears throat> uh, your table size is going to be considerably smaller, which is very convenient for me. Uh, it recommends in the rules a two foot by four foot playing area, uh, which is perfect. It's a perfect small area to play and resolve a battle. So get yourself the proper sized area to play in. It's not going to be difficult, especially if you're playing in the smaller scales, and you're good to go.
In my case here, I play my games on a little bit of, a little bit bigger size table for 15 millimeter. It's actually two foam boards that are each uh, two foot by three foot, and the way I have them put together, I get a three by four table, which basically gives me an extra foot of width between the armies, and with a little modification I can remedy that little problem. Otherwise, armies are a little bit too far away from each other at the beginning. But that's what I use, and it looks pretty good. So get yourself a tablecloth, or if you already have boards or a table layout, you know, that's the size table you need. And you're good to go. So there you go. That's the play area.